Blessed is the man that walks not in the path of wickedness. He does not stand in the path of sinners. The man that will be blessed must avoid this path. The path of ungodly people. The path of receiving counsel from ungodly people. It is funny that many Christians rely more on what people say than what God say, than what the Bible, the word of God says. When you rely so much on what people are saying, you will miss the blessing. Saul relied so much on what people, his people were telling him. And so, instead of getting the blessing of establishment, he was cast and as a matter of fact, his ministry and his rulership, his reign was cut short because of relying upon people instead of relying upon God. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 5 God says thus says the Lord cast be the man that trusts in man. So if you trust the opinion of men more than the opinion of God, then you are attracting a, uh, a curse. You are moving from the path of receiving from God to a path of getting the curse. So do not rely on people on what people say, on what people think. Rely and do your best to get the respect of God, the respect of the Holy Spirit, the approval of God is more important than the approval of man. That's why we must honor the word of God more than anything. For the word of God is forever exalted. Psalms 119 verse 89. The word of God is forever established in heaven. The word of God is forever established. Forever. Everything else will pass but the word of God will settle forever. The word of God will remain when everything else have gone. When your husband has gone. When your wife has gone. When your children have left you. What you will remain with is the word of God. When everybody else is not around. When you are alone. Everybody is away from you, the word of God will keep you. The Bible says for the just shall live by faith, by believing. Believing the word of God. Believing the word of God. Lift up your hand and say my father, my God. I will live by your word. I honor your word. I love your word. I think that is very important. So there is a path you can take and it will take you straight to the blessing of God. But also you must watch out for the path that can lead you to destruction and death. And many people don't know that. There is a scripture, find it for me, that says that a baby, a baby, a child, uh, or a foolish man, is it a baby or a foolish man? A foolish man 
does not, when a foolish man see evil, hmm, he does not withdraw. He does not hide himself. He goes on into trouble. He goes on into trouble. There is a scripture like that. Banasifiwe. So we must learn to identify things that can bring us the blessing. Matthew chapter 13 verse 17. Matthew 13 17. Matthew chapter 13 verse 17. Glory to God. The Bible says for not sorry not this one John sorry. John chapter 13 verse 13 verse 17 John if you know these things there are things when you know happy are you when you do them there are other things when you know them and you do them you will be cast you will see evil coming to you bad things will begin to happen in your life but there are things when you know them and you do them they will get you to the blessing i pray in the name of jesus that your eyes will know what things that will take you to the path of receiving i pray that god will reveal to you the things that you need to do in order to be blessed are you shouting amen so what are these parts? What are these things that will keep you in the path of receiving from God? Number one is knowledge. Looking for knowledge. Looking for knowledge. Looking for knowledge. Because he says, if you know, preach to your neighbor, tell them if you know. Yes. If you know, bless are you? Tell them that. Try it again. Tell another neighbor. If you know, blessed are you. Tell another neighbor. If you know, blessed are you. Okay, now tell it to yourself. If I know, blessed I am. Exactly. So God says, Jesus, these are the words of Jesus. If there are any words that you must be very keen about, very keen and conscious about, are the words of the Bible that are printed and written in red. Those are the words that you are supposed to be so much keen about. So much keen about. If there is any word in the Bible that you should pay a lot of attention to, is any word that is written in red. Because those are the words of our Savior. The words of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Lift up your hand and say, my Father, my God, reveal to me things to know. Reveal to me things to know. So that I can be blessed. The word blessing there is also the word happy. And vice versa. The word happy is also the name blessed. So every time KJV says blessed. It's also meaning happy. So when you do these things you get blessed. When you do these things you become happy because the blessing of God eliminates sorrow. Write that down. It is the blessing of God that deletes sorrow. It is the, it is the blessing of God that eliminates sorrow. You cannot be blessed and continue crying. You cannot be blessed and continue to grieve. You cannot be blessed and continue to, to be sorrowful. You cannot be blessed and continue to mourn. When the blessing of God comes, the Bible says you become rich. Rich of what? Rich of joy. Rich of peace. 
Proverbs 10, 22. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh the rich. Rich where? Rich in the heart. The blessing of God makes you rich all round. The blessing of God makes you rich all round. If you are faithful with the little, you shall be entrusted with much. If you are not faithful with the mammon, with the money, who will entrust you the true treasures of heaven? So every time God blesses you because when you are faithful, then you shall be given the true treasures of heaven. He was not talking about money. He, was, he gave an example with money. He said that if you cannot be entrusted, if you cannot be trusted with the money, who will entrust you with the true riches of heaven? So there are things that are better than money. There are things that are better than money. Number one, peace. Peace is better than money. The Bible says that money answereth all things. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 19. Ecclesiastes 10, 19. The Bible says that money answereth all things. A feast is made for laughter. Wine made, maketh merry. But money answereth all things. However, there are things that are better than money. Yes, money will answer everything. Money will facilitate. But money cannot give you everything. Money can facilitate all things. But money cannot give you all things. For instance, money cannot give you eternal life. So, Number one, peace is more important than money. Number two, eternal life, salvation is more important than money. The Bible says, what shall it profit a man? For if he gains the whole world and yet loses his soul. So keeping your soul with God is more important than money. Glory to Jesus. I say glory to Jesus. So it is important for us to seek for things that are more important. Like peace. Like eternal life. Like happiness. Happiness. Like the blessing of God. So the blessing of God maketh the rich and added no sorrow. Proverbs 10:22 The blessing of God it is the one that brings the riches that riches there we are talking about the true riches of God the thing that brings money the thing that brings money is not your hard is not your hard work the thing that brings money is the spirit of prosperity the spirit of God the spirit of prosperity somebody say the spirit of prosperity you find that in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. Thou shalt remember but the Lord thy God. For it is he that giveth the power. That power is what we call the spirit of prosperity. The power to make wealth. There is somebody here. If you give them your business that is doing very well. After a few days the business will stop doing well. Why? Because they do not have the blessing. They do not have the power to make wealth. They, do, they are not empowered to make wealth. And that is what you call a blessing. The spirit of prosperity. The spirit of prosperity. If you want to become rich, don't look for money. Look for the spirit of prosperity. Look for the spirit in money. Look for the spirit that commands money to come and money answers. The Bible says money answereth all things. Glory to God. So if money can answer, money can answer, if money can answer all things, money can answer your righteousness, your work with God, your holiness, your integrity, your faith your prayer glory to jesus are we still together 
Is this very complex? Are you getting something? Are you understanding? Glory to God. So, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh the rich and addeth no sorrow. So, it is the blessing of God that eliminates sorrow and pain in our lives. Not money. The blessing of God. May the Lord uh, keep you in the path of receiving his blessing. So, number one, look for knowledge. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and righteousness. 6.33. Matthew 6.33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all these other things. And all these things shall be added unto you when you get the blessing from God. When you get the blessing from God. When you get. There are people who go looking for money. Money, when money realizes that you are always looking for it, money will never come to you. Money will run away from you so that you continue chasing it, continue pursuing it, and you will never have enough of it. You will never have enough of it. But when you seek God first, then there is a blessing that will enter you, and that blessing will channel the, 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 all the money that you need into your life. Are you shouting amen? Are you shouting a believing amen? So seek knowledge. Look for knowledge. Number two, live a life of doing what you have known. Go back to our text, John thirteen seventeen. John 13, 17. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. So knowing is one thing, but he says, blessed are you. NKJV says blessed. This one says, happy are you. Happy are you if you do them. Blessed are you if you do them. So there is a place of knowledge, but also there is a place of doing. There is a place of knowing, but also there is a place of doing. When you know, when you know something, in order for you to benefit from it, you have to do it. You have to do it. You have to do something about it so that you can be able to benefit from that thing. Bonus if you were. James chapter 1 verse 25. A lot of people know things. But not everyone lives by what they know. God says that you will be blessed. If you do what you know. Let us read together. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty. And continued therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer, a doer. If you become a doer of the work, now this man shall be blessed in his deed. So to attract the blessing of God, you need first of all to know, and then when you know, you begin to do them. The things that God will reveal to you, then you start uh, following them up so that you can be blessed. Number three. So number one is knowledge. Number uh, looking for knowledge. Number two, uh, living by what you know. Number three, living by faith. Living by faith. Living by faith. If you want to be blessed, you must live by faith. You must believe God. You must believe what you have learned from God. You must believe the word of God. You must believe the things you hear. You must believe the things you know. You must believe the Holy Spirit. 
You must believe the words of Jesus. You must believe the words of God. You must believe that book that you carry. The word of God. You must believe it if you want to be blessed. If you want to be blessed. You must believe the word of God. You must believe God. You must walk by faith. No matter what is happening in your life. You need to believe that God is on your side. Nothing shakes a man of faith. Despite what is happening to you. If you believe. Then you will see the hand of God. The power of God. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We read from verse 8. Give us from NIV. Believing God. Believing God. There are so many believers who are unbelievers. There are so many believers in church who do not believe. Even before we go to this, let's go back to um, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. Then we shall come back to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 8. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise that was left to us of entering into his rest, the rest of God, any of you should seem to come short of it. Let us fear. Let us fear not to believe. Let us fear. Because to be promised something is, doesn't mean that you have it or that it is a guarantee that you will have it. If I, if I call you and I tell you that from today that car that I have I've given it to you. If you don't believe it and come for it, if you don't believe it and come for it, it will never be yours. Is that not so? It will remain in my parking. So some of us we have blessings that God have already released, and He has already said that this one is for you. But because we don't believe Him, because we refused to believe. We even never went for them. God has a lot, so much power to bless your life, to move your life to the next level, to heal you completely. Some of you that are sick here, God has so much power here, right here today, to deliver you completely from that disease. To deliver you completely from that situation that has troubled you for years. The problem is that we don't believe God. The problem is that we don't believe the word of God. If you can believe today, your life can change from today. If you can believe God today, your life now can move from the life of struggle to a life of a blessing Every day. The Bible says that he loaded us with uh, his benefits daily. Daily. Every day. Every day. Psalms 68. Now look at verse 2. He says what? Verse 2 he says. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit any one of them. Because they never mixed it with faith. Lift up your hand and say my father my God. My father, my maker. The reason why I tell you to say my father, my God. Is so that something can enter into you. That this God we are talking about is your father. This God we are talking about is your maker. Lift up your hand and say my father, my God. My father, my maker. 
from today I believe your power is so much you have the ability to move my life to the next level you have the ability to change my life to heal me to deliver me forever I believe in you I believe your word in Jesus name these people did not believe God that's why they never saw the hand of God say from today I believe God God is not like a man God is not like my uncle God is not like my mother you know God is all powerful God has the power to heal you if you are here and you are sick believe God right now that you will leave this door when you are healed you will leave this mountain when you are totally healed believe God that you will never go to hospital believe God that you will never be sick in your life believe God that you will never beg for food believe God you will never beg for anything believe God that your children will never beg for bread believe God that your life is changing believe God that your family is changing it is possible with God all things are possible with God if we believe all things are possible with God if we believe can you say that I believe say again I believe give us John chapter 12 look at verse 14 St. John chapter 12. Give us the other way. 14, 12. 14, 12. Let us read this scripture together. Verily, verily, I say unto you that he that hath on me shall do what? The works that I do shall he do also hallelujah do you know the things jesus was doing in this world do you know that jesus would appear like this in a tomb and demons will begin to scream now god's jesus says that if you can believe on me the things that i was doing to the devil you can do them to him hallelujah do you know that one day jesus went to a wedding party and uh, the wine was no long was had 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 finished and the wine that jesus is talking about there that was not the wine that is sold in a bar it was not alcohol it was grape vine it was it was the wine from from the grapes it was not fermented Jesus never made alcohol. Jesus made wine, sweet wine. Hallelujah. So it was like juice. So he made juice. He made soda. So he went to a party, to a wedding party, and there was no more soda. And he commanded the people, he told the people, just bring water in drums. Just bring water in drums. And they responded with their faith. They responded. The mother said, whatever this man will tell you, just do it. I know him. Whatever he will tell you, just do it. So he told them to bring drums full of water. And they brought drums full of water. He never even touched it. He told them, just go and taste it. And tell me. And when they went with a cup and tasted the water, the water was pure fruit juice. Hallelujah. Pure wine. Hallelujah. Just commanding. He, he did not even have to touch it. You don't have to struggle. Are you listening to me? If you believe in Jesus. You don't have to struggle in this life. You don't have to struggle. You don't even have to be a, in the area. You don't have to be there for things to happen. Things can happen even before you get there. Things will be happening in your life. Even before you get to your business. Uh, you know things will begin to happen just like that somebody say I believe oh say again I believe somebody here you will see the hand of God in your life I say if you believe you will see the hand of God our problem is that we don't believe and do you know why we don't believe because we have not heard why do 
Why do we doubt? Why don't we believe? Because we have not heard. We have not heard God. We have not heard about God. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and by hearing by the word of God. Right now what you are hearing is a word of God. The word that will build faith in you. That's why if possible, if, if possible, you should come to church every day to hear God. Because your life is going to be, the level of your life is going to be determined by the level of your faith. The level of your life is going to be determined by the level of your faith. The level at which you will see the power of God in your life will be purely determined not by your not by your degrees, not by your education, not by your hard work, but by the level of your faith. If there is something to invest in, is your faith. Glory to God. Somebody say, I will work towards my faith. Say, I will work on my faith. Lift up your hand and say, my Father, my God. Say, Holy Spirit of God. Give me the ability to trust in God, to believe God, to have faith in God. Increase my faith. Multiply my faith. The reason why we are struggling so much in life is because we don't believe God. We don't believe God. Look at Matthew chapter 17 verse 20. Matthew 17 20. The reason why we struggle a lot. The reason why we are struggling so much. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. Go back uh, a little bit. And Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed. Go back to verse 16. Then the disciples understood that. Uh -huh, verse 14 says what? And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic. He is a madman. He has become mad. And so vexed. Now, now Tesla son is suffering. He is being troubled. For oftentimes he falleth into the fire and often uh, into the water. Mm. And I brought him to thy disciples and they could not, they could not cure him. They were not able to deliver this man, this boy. Then Jesus answered and said, Oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall, shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. Because you don't believe, bring him to me. The reason we are so we are so busy in prayer mountains, praying, and nothing is happening in our lives. The reason why we keep on coming to church and we keep on coming to the altar to be prayed over, and nothing is happening, nothing is changing in our, in our lives, it is because we lack faith. It is because we don't believe God. That's why we keep on coming. That's why we keep on praying and nothing is happening. That's why we keep on praying and nothing is happening. So he said, because you don't have faith, bring the child to him. And Jesus rebuked the devil. The reason why our lives never change and the devil seems not to fear us and to respect us. It is because we never rebuke him. We tolerate him. Anything you tolerate has the right to continue harassing you. Anything you tolerate has the right to continue harassing you. We were given the power to rebuke the devil. Lift up your hand and say, my father, my God. Say, my father, my maker. Anything or anyone standing on my destiny, standing between me and my destiny, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Get out of the way. Leave my life alone. Leave me alone. Anything from the pit of hell, anything from hell, coming to destroy me coming to limit my life I rebuke you today live my life live my life in Jesus name 
The reason why we keep on praying and nothing is happening, we pray wrong. We pray like we are begging. We should use authority. We should use the power that was given to us. He says, he rebuked the devil. They never rebuked the devil. They were negotiating with the devil. Never negotiate with the devil. Never with negotiate with malaria. Never negotiate with the sickness. When you feel some pain here, don't begin to think about it. Don't begin to think, now what is this? You go uh, to YouTube, you go to Google, and you start Googling uh, to try and find out what that pain could mean. That pain is a sign that the devil has attacked you. That pain is a sign that the devil has inhabited your body. And so you should not be negotiating and trying to find out the name of that devil. Whether that name, whether that devil is called cancer or that devil is called tumor, the fact remains that that is a devil. And how to deal with the devil is by rebuking the devil. Hallelujah. So you feel some pain here and you put your hand there and you rebuke the devil. You rebuke that pain out of your, your body. With a lot of with a lot of faith if you know these things happy are you if you do them if you know these things happy are you not because of knowing but because you are doing them happy are you if you do what if you do them will you do the word of god will you follow the word of god will you obey the word of god yes so he rebuked the devil and he departed out of him. Whenever you rebuke the devil, the devil has no choice. The Bible says resist him and he will flee away from you. Every time you sense and realize that the devil is trying to, to enter and penetrate and Ill infiltrate your, your family. You don't talk to him. You rebuke him. You tell him devil. Out of my life. Out of my family. I command you to go out. I command you out of my, my business. I command you out of my children. I command you out of my body. Lift up your hand and say my father my God. Under this anointing. Anything or anyone. Try to destroy my life trying to in infiltrate my life I command you out I command you out use the authority Jesus has given you so Jesus picked the devil and he departed out of him and the child was cured from that very hour you see when you believe the things that Jesus did you will do them if you believe the things that I did greater than this he said greater than the things that I did you will do them so Jesus would rebuke the devil and the devil would get out the devil would depart go and find devils in your family and begin to rebuke them not in your name your name has no power your hand has no power in the name of Jesus they will depart I said not in the name of your father not in the name of your family in your family there is no power but in the name of Jesus the devils will respect that name the devils will fear that name hallelujah are you listening to me will you do that go to your family and find anywhere the devil is you can even experiment by calling the devil come devil do something here so that I can rebuke you and you will see how powerful you are you will see how powerful the name of Jesus is Hallelujah. In case in your life there is no problem, there is no devil. Now call him tonight. Tell him, devil, when I go home, I want to see you somewhere so that I can rebuke you. I want to see you manifesting somewhere so that I can rebuke you. From today, receive the power of courage. The anointing to rebuke the devil. The power to deal with the devil. Let's continue. We are hearing the word of God. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, 
For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, the only thing that is making your life to go in circles, to go round, to go round, you are not moving anywhere. You are not achieving anything. You are not progressing in life. He says, the only reason that is happening in your life, it is because you do not have even as little as the mustard seed size of faith. Even the size of a mustard seed in terms of faith you do not have. Lift up your hand and say, my father, my God, by the reason of this word, plant faith in me. Plant the spirit of faith inside my heart. Let faith begin to grow. Let faith begin to grow in Jesus' name. So he says, you shall say to this mountain, remove hands to yonder place and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you. From today, nothing will be impossible for you. I, are you believing the word of God? Hey, do you know what that means? Those are the words of Jesus. And he says what? That from today, when you, if you have faith, nothing Nothing, nothing. What is nothing? What is nothing? Nothing means zero. Nothing means nothing means zero. Nothing, completely nothing. 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 He says there will be zero impossibility in your life. He says there will be zero difficulties. In your life. He says there will be zero. Handicap. Handicap. Handicapness in your life. There will be zero struggle. There will be zero poverty. There will be zero scarcity. There will be zero lack. In your life. He says whatever project you want to start. It will be possible for you. Whatever business you want to start. If you have faith. It will be possible for you. You will be able to do it. If you want to go to school, it will be possible for you. Lift up your hand and say, my father, my God, this year as it ends, I receive and embrace the spirit of faith. I will believe. I will believe in you. In Jesus name. And even as we begin the new year, it is impossible to walk by faith. Somebody say faith. Oh, please say faith. So now whatever you do, whether it is serving God, whether it is coming to church, do it by faith. There are people who could not come to church because they don't have faith. If they had faith, they would come and whatever they were fearing, they will not fear. Because when there is fear, faith cannot operate. Write that down. When there is fear, faith cannot operate. So the greatest enemy of faith is number one, fear. 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 And of course, number two, is lack of knowledge. The greatest enemy of faith is when you don't know. Because when you don't know, you don't expect. What you don't know, you don't expect. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Come here, Brother Charles. Come running. Hallelujah. Were you expecting me to give you this? Did you expect that when you come to church, you are going to return home with money? But now you are returning home with money. Hallelujah. When you lack faith, when you lack knowledge rather, you do not expect anything. 
I've given him just 200. But he didn't expect. So he didn't know. He didn't know. So he did not expect. Glory to God. Come here, I pray for you. God will give you things that you don't even expect. God will bless you beyond your expectations. God will bless you beyond your imaginations. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. It is important to have knowledge. Because when you have knowledge, one of the things that will happen when you have knowledge is that you will have expectation. So you will expect that God, I know that God will do this by the end of this month. God, I want God to do A, B, C, D. Because you know he can do it. Hallelujah. Number two, you will position yourself. You will get ready. You will set yourself. You will position yourself to receive. Do you know when somebody is traveling, they don't just wake up and go. You know that, right? One, because they know that there is somewhere they are going. Number two, they have an expectation of where they are going. So they cannot just wake up and go. They will prepare themselves. They will do what? They will prepare. Even when you are coming to church, you prepare yourself. Because there is an expectation that you had. And then you knew where you were going. Glory to God. So when you know, when you know and you have faith, then you prepare yourself to receive from God. The reason why we are not in the path of receiving from God, it is because we do not have faith. We do not have knowledge. We do not have expectation. That's why even when you come to church, you return home the same way. Because where there is no expectation, write this down. Where there is no expectation, there is no manifestation. It is very easy. It is as simple as that. Where there is no expectation, there is no manifestation there is no manifest manifestation so there has to be an expectation for you to see some manifestation from God so that's why we keep on coming to church but nothing is happening the sickness you came with you return home with it somebody said that is changing the poverty that you came with, you return home with it. We believe God can save us and take us to heaven. But most of us don't believe that God can bless us. God can change us. God can deliver us from poverty. God can deliver us from, from, from diseases and from sicknesses, from struggle. We don't believe God for such things. We only believe God for spiritual things. From today, I pray. That when you come to church, come with a target. Come with what? Come with a target. It's what? It's, it's called vision. Somebody say vision. When you come to church, come visualizing what God will do for you. Come with a target. Come believing that the Holy Spirit today will touch me. Mungu akianza kumove kwa kanisa. Leo tukianza tu kwa budu. Najua kwamba mungu ataniguza na nitapona leo. You will not return the same way. From today, your life cannot remain the same again. I say from today, your life will never remain the same again. The hand of God, the hand of God is coming upon your life. So the problem is not God releasing. The problem is always us receiving. I pray that God will position you in the path of receiving from him. Amen. And one of those things that will keep you there in the path of receiving, we have said, is number one, knowledge. Number two, doing what you know. And number three, faith. Believing. Somebody say, I will believe. Say again, I will believe. So those three things are very important. You get to know. Then you get to do what you know or, or what you have known. And then you believe. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if thou shalt believe on me, the things I do greater than this shalt thou do also. Hallelujah. May you go doing the things that Jesus was doing in this world. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost, with the Holy Ghost and power that he went about 
doing good. Every time you meet people, I decree in the name of Jesus that God will empower you to do good to them. I say God will empower you to do good to them. It is yesterday evening I was thinking about that message that we have been preaching here about, about helping other people. And I was challenging myself, asking myself, who can I help today? Who can I help? And I collected some people and I helped them. Because I want to do the things that I know. If you know these things, happy are you if you do them. Never forget John chapter 13, verse 17. If you know these things, happy are you if you do them.